So you're thinking about moving to Bellingham, Washington, or more specifically the Ferndale, Washington area. Well, in this video, I'm gonna take you inside the computer using Google Maps and give you a tour all around Ferndale, Washington to see if it might be a good fit for you. So let's get after it right now. If this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about eating, sleeping, playing, and working, as well as the good and bad about living in Bellingham, Washington, and more specifically Ferndale, Washington, then subscribe below and tap the bell icon for notifications so you can be the first to know about the current market in Bellingham and Ferndale. My name is Dale Serbasek and I'm with the Living in Bellingham, Washington team, and every day we get calls, texts, and emails from people just like you, and we love it. So whether you're thinking of moving in nine days or 90 days, give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email. We'll be happy to help you make that smooth move to the Bellingham or Ferndale area. Welcome everybody to the Ferndale map tour. I'm glad you're with me today and we are in Google Maps. And as you can see here, we have right smack dab in the middle is Ferndale, Washington. Down here is Bellingham, Washington. And it is about a 15 to 20 minute drive to Ferndale from Bellingham, straight up I-5 here. As you can see, some of the other familiar communities in Whatcom County, we got Everson over here, we got Linden, Blaine, Birch Bay, various other towns, Glacier, Sumas. All of these towns, uh, I have a vlog tour in my channel, so I will link to those videos and the traveling on I-5 here, 15 minutes between Ferndale and Bellingham. Seattle, you're looking at about an hour and a half, straight down I-5. And to Vancouver, British Columbia, you're looking at just over an hour, hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes. Of course, depending on the border wait times, there's two border crossings right here, Peace Arch and Pacific Highway. And if you are gonna be traveling back and forth often, I would encourage you to get a Nexus Pass. It's $50 and it's good for five years and it allows you to go in Nexus designated lanes which have significantly less cars in them and you will be glad you did that. And I would encourage you to do it sooner rather than later because I heard that it's about a year long wait from when you apply to when you get one. So as you come up I-5 here into Ferndale, Main Street is gonna connect you pretty much all the way through most of the central business district. And as you cross over the freeway and start heading west, you got a couple grocery stores, you got grocery outlet right here, and Coconut Kinney's is a nice local restaurant. There's also an Asian restaurant right here, Asian Bistro, I think it's called. Hagen's is one of the bigger grocery stores in our area. They were originally locally owned. I think they're owned by Safeway now, but Hagen's, uh, the Hagen family started this grocery store chain in Whatcom County probably over a hundred years ago. There's one in uh, Bellingham, several in Bellingham and so the, some of the other communities as well. We got Woods Coffee right here. This is a local coffee shop that was started about hmm, 20 years ago, I would say, uh, by Wes, a guy named Wes. I can't remember what his last name, Herman, Wes Herman, uh, up in Linden. They make great coffee. They actually roast their own coffee in a roastery off of Lakeway down in Bellingham. Of course, you got Starbucks and you got Walgreens, your typical places here. There's a nice off-leash dog park right there. And you got some other various restaurants down in here as well, Sports Center. And as we cross the Nooksack River, this is where we get into the kind of the old town. This whole area here is old town, downtown Ferndale. Some of the well-established restaurants that have been there forever. Uh, are in this area and we'll zoom in a little bit closer. Some of the most notable ones, we've got Cedars Restaurant and Lounge right here. We have Chihuahua's, great Mexican restaurant. Of course, been there forever. Asian grocery store, Let's zoom in a little bit more here. Uh, we've also got the Main Street Bar and Grill. Let's click on some of these and bring up some pictures so you can see what they look like on the inside. So you can see there's a Definitely uh, the older restaurants in town that have the bars. Haven't been remodeled, but they are just a great place to go hang out on, um, you know, Friday nights, Saturday nights. They have a lot of karaoke, local bands, trivia nights. Of course, they're always gonna be packed during the Seahawks. You can kind of get a general vibe of that place. And then the Cedars here. I was just in here the other night. Again, these are places that uh, they haven't really, they kind of are in a time capsule. They haven't changed much at all. 
since they first opened. Got your good old greasy fried food. And let's see here, what else do we got? We got Dimitri's. Dimitri's is a great uh, Greek and Italian restaurant, Riverside Bar and Grill. So you can just see along here is gonna be a lot of the historic area, a lot of great restaurants. There's District Brewing right there, a nice little brewery. Uh, there's also back here, there's a cool brewery, Down Taps Brewery. This is kind of interesting. It's a brewery where you go in and you get a wristband and they take your card on file and you go and you can serve your own beer. They've got lots of different taps. So you could basically hold up your wristband and it's kind of like those candy shops where you just take what you want and they weigh it. Well, it's actually counting the ounces that are coming out of the machine and they, they give you a price per ounce and it talks about that particular brew, its alcohol content, how hoppy it is or how sweet it is. And it monitors how much you're drinking over a specific period of time as well. And it will cut you off. Uh, I've never had it happen. I've just heard it, but it will cut you off after a certain amount that the lawyers have deemed fit uh, is a safe amount for them to serve you over a period of time. And it's a lot of fun because you can literally just pour an ounce or two if you want to taste something. If you like it, you come back and you pour a lot more. So I, I'd encourage you to check that out. It's, it's a lot of fun. Let's get back over here on the west side of the downtown area. So if you come up Vista Drive here, you're gonna come up to some of the schools. You got Ferndale High School. They're completely renovating Ferndale High School, all new athletic uh, facilities, brand new football stadium. Um, it, it, it was in dire need of uh, new buildings and I'm glad that they're gonna be doing that. So let's zoom out a little bit more here. And as we head north here is where you start to get into more of the residential areas in the Ferndale area. So of course we have the main high school right here. And we got a couple middle schools, Vista Middle School, Horizon Middle School. And of course you have the elementary schools are scattered throughout here as well. Great school system. Uh, there's also a Montessori school, if you've heard of that. We've got preschool down here. So we're gonna go to niche.com and it's gonna show you overall, uh, the Ferndale School District's given a B minus. Of course, they're factoring in a lot of different things. They, they factor in academics, teachers, diversity, college prep statistics, it's administration, clubs and activities. Again, being a smaller school district doesn't necessarily have quite the funding that some of the bigger school districts in other places would have, but these are still very acceptable scores that you can see there. Uh, we got statistics here, average SATs. I mean, that's not bad. Uh, graduation rate, um, so those are nice statistics to see. Student, student to teacher ratio, 18 to one. So you can see there's some great schools in the Ferndale area. And moving on to the real estate side of things. Now, right now, this is a list uh, of all the homes that are currently for sale in the Ferndale area. You can see uh, there's Ferndale mailing address goes quite a bit beyond the Ferndale boundaries, the Ferndale proper area here. So you can see there's 76 current properties for sale in the Ferndale area. And here we have the sold properties from the last six months. And you can see there's been 251 sales. So quite a few properties. It's been a very strong market. We are seeing a bit of a slowdown in sales with the interest rates climbing over 7%. But still, as you can tell, 251 properties in Ferndale is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, and, and with only 27 properties for sale, you can still see that there's strong buyer demand. We're definitely still in a buyer's market but, uh, or excuse me, we're still in a seller's market, uh, but uh, the buyers are slowing down a bit with the interest rates. And lastly here, we're at realtor.com, which you can see the median listing price of $648,000, which is about $345 a square foot, and the median sold home price of $535,000. Again, it's nifty tools here. There are also quite a few nice parks in the Ferndale area. Some of the more notable ones is Hovander Homestead Park and Tenant Lake Park. The Hovander Homestead Park is featured more in my Ferndale vlog tour where I'm walking around and talking about, uh, it was settled in the early 1900s by a family from Sweden, the Hovander family. And they basically have the, all of their buildings there preserved still from when they first moved there. They have a petting zoo, a lot of great photos. You can see over here, there's an observatory where you can climb up the stairs and get a really nice view of Tenant Lake. And uh, there's a boardwalk that you can walk on that takes you out over the marshy areas, which is really nice. It's closed this time of the year right now, 
I believe it's for protection of the habitat. Like you can, can see the petting zoo and a lot of nice old buildings. Really big house that you can take tours of as well that's all been restored. It's right along the Nooksack River. There's a great pavilion there as well so you can have birthday parties or company parties. Rent those out. It's very busy in the summertime. There's a lot of birthday parties. I think we, I think it was probably the 10th or 11th birthday for my twin daughters we had out there at Hovander Park. And uh, the tenant area, or the tenant lake area, again, just a beautiful area. You can see the lily pads. And this is part of the boardwalk that walks along uh, throughout that marshy area. Very protected habitat. There's also a really cool herb garden that you can walk through that has all these different identified herbs and such that you can uh, smell and, and it's just a lot of fun. And right here along the Nooksack River, we have Pioneer Park, which there's a lot of cool festivities throughout the year, Christmas time and different holidays in the summer where they open this up to the public and all of these are restored old pioneer era buildings like taverns and general stores and, and different types of homes and post offices and doctor's offices. Really, really a neat place to go and take the kids, especially if you're into history. I'd encourage you to come check out Pioneer Park. And now that I've switched over into the satellite mode, you can get a, a feel for the residential areas and how densely it is populated in this particular area. This is gonna be the majority of the Ferndale area. There are some areas a little further north here that are currently being developed in this general area with new construction. Houses in there are really nice. They're modern looking. They're going to be starting in the five, six hundred thousand range and they go on up to million dollar range. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this map tour of the Ferndale area. Ferndale is a nice little town. Like I said, it's only about 15,000 people and it has a nice feel to it. A lot of people do purchase in Ferndale because it is so close to Bellingham and you're gonna save a significant amount of money on buying in the Ferndale area. I would say a house that would be, let's say $500,000 in Bellingham, you could probably pick up for somewhere in the 450 range in Ferndale. So that extra 10 minute drive is worth saving 50 or so thousand dollars. I would encourage you to look at Ferndale as an option. Thank you again for sticking around on this tour and uh, give me a call if you're thinking about moving to Ferndale. Oh,